Kick's going to go into the end zone, and that's where we will bring out the FAMU offense led by Jeremy Musa, their starting quarterback, a transfer from Vandy. Some fans might be familiar with him, but he gets the start for the Rattlers. Yeah, and he's physically impressive, 6'3", 225. He has a live arm, got a chance to see him prior to the game, you know, throwing him warm-ups. I think they're excited about his decision-making. He was in a competition, obviously, with Rashawn McKay. He comes out of camp as the starter, and I think they're excited about what he may do. Now, it's been a while, Matt, since he's been hit. You know, quarterbacks are typically off limits in practice. We'll see if the game moves fast for him. One of the big storylines for FAMU, Cameron Coven, their starting right tackle is not here. He was one of the players that was not certified. So kind of a working line for Musa and the Rattlers. First and 10, ball spotted at the 25. Musa the play fake, quick out to 83. Darian Oxendine at a gain of eight, at a good start for Musa and the Rattlers. Well, Matt, here's the thing. When we found out right away, the receivers from FAMU, FAMU can go. They're fast, they're quick, and you just see the run after catch ability by Oxendine. You're going to know tempo with this Willie Simmons offense. He came up through Rich Rodriguez at Clemson. He said all Musa has to do is drive the car. And again, quick snap, quick throw, and a first down. That's David Manigo moving the chains at a gain of six, tackled by Storm Duck. And this is a great challenge for North Carolina. Their secondary has probably been one of the more underperforming groups for this program over the last few years, and they get a challenge with these receivers. Early first down has to feel good for FAMU. Musa going to throw it for the third time, and again a completion. That's the star receiver, Xavier Smith. We'll be talking about number 19 throughout the night. He is a talented kid. He's a fast kid, and they're going to look to get him the ball. Yeah, and he's on the NFL radar You know, to, to kind of just continue on with how much speed and talent they have at wide receiver. He's somebody that could end up playing on Sundays. A quick start for FAMU. That's Smith in motion. Jennings, the ball carry in the backfield. A good job by North Carolina's defensive front. That's Power Eccles, one of the players, new defensive coordinator. Coach Chiswick says is the heart of the defense and a good play by Eccles. And an awesome name for a linebacker. It really Let's is. Let's just be honest. Intercepted by Storm Duck on third and four. And so after a quick start, the North Carolina defense is going to force a punt. But Storm Duck's one of those players we talked about, has all the talent. Can he live up to those expectations? Yeah, just zone coverage. And Storm Duck is, is trapping the inside out. You know, the inside route is breaking out. And Storm Duck traps it. It's an opportunity to pick that and take it all the way back the other way. He's one of these corners, you know, between Tony Grimes and Storm Duck, guys that have a ton of talent that they feel like can be really good players, just want to see him show up more consistently. Chris Fadul, the punter for FAMU. Josh Downs deep to receive. He's got a fair catch it at the 11-yard line. And so here comes Drake May. The red shirt freshman quarterback from nearby Huntersville, North Carolina, had all the accolades coming out of high school, and now he's got this offense in his control. And there's a lot of pressure that comes with that, and you know, the expectations, the anticipation for it, but he has the talent. I think people are going to be a little bit surprised by his athleticism. Had a coach on the field compare him to Daniel Jones in terms of athleticism. We'll see if we see some of that. Downs in motion early. The give to the running back, DJ Jones, who gets the start in a crowded backfield. We'll see all four running backs tonight between Jones and Caleb Hood and a couple of talented freshmen. And a short gain for Jones on first down. And no mistake about it, Matt, the advantage clearly for North Carolina would probably be running right at the Rattlers. Bigger up front, and obviously, as you said, the talented running backs. May going to throw it, taking a shot, has a man. It is incomplete. 
intended for J.J. Jones. Courtney Cox on the coverage. And the first throw for Drake May, first chance to see that arm falls incomplete. It was a great throw. J.J. Jones wins on the route. He's on top of the defensive back. The ball is right there, and it's a pretty good job. And Kind of nice to get kind of bumped into for the first time, feel like you're in the, the heat of a game, but that's a nice throw right out of the gate by Drake May. I'm sure he wishes J.J. Jones came down with that one. So third and nine for May in the offense, first possession of the game. Time for May, climbs the pocket to the sidelines, goes right back to Jones. And he's going to be short of the first down after a gain of eight. It's going to be fourth and inches. Fam, you, you know, playing a two deep. And I actually live thought this maybe was a penalty. It should have been. I don't even know if he was in bounds yeah, when he no, caught no. that. J.J. Jones stepped out of right. bounds and then came back in bounds to catch the football. First one to touch it, that'd be illegal touching. And actually should have been a penalty instead of a, a gain. Either way, Tar Heels punting. Ben Kiernan, Ray Guy Award watch list. They missed the penalty. Xavier Smith, their talented receiver, deep to receive the punt. And he, too, is going to fair catch it right there at the 30-yard line. So nothing doing for the offense. It's going to be defense and defense early on after the punt of 49. 0-0 here early in the first quarter on ACC Network. 0.0 for new defense coordinator Gene Chizik, Tim, who comes back to be Mac Brown's defensive coordinator. He's got national championship pedigree. Listen to this. He said, you know what my task is? Keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple. Let guys play fast. And there is no question there was kind of instant credibility with the players with his success. Obviously seeing him on TV the past few years, they're excited to have him. And an early strike, Musa finds his receiver number 10, Jamari A. Sharid, at a gain of nine. And Chizik, of course, Defensive coordinator at Texas with Mac Brown when they won that national championship with Vince Young at quarterback. And then the head coach at Auburn, he won the national championship at Cam Newton at quarterback. So Chiz comes back to coach for Mac Brown, feeling pretty good about his defensive line. So that'll be the strength of the unit. Musa again to throw, incomplete. Good coverage on the play by number 16, DeAndre Boykins. And it, it's good to see Boykins, if you're Gene Chizik, you know, making a play. You know, having seen North Carolina a few times the last couple of years, you know, it just seems like moment of truth. Defensive backs making the play as the wide receivers going for the football. That's where they kind of really disappointed. And I think that they were, they were at times embarrassed by that effort. I think that's part of Gene Chizik wanting to keep it simple, Matt. Let guys play fast. Really just get better at doing less. See if they can do enough to stop the first down. They can't. That's Jennings, who's going to move the chains for the Rattlers after a gain of four. Jabari Ritzy on the tackle. And we got an injury on the field. And that's number one, Tony Grimes, one of the corners we had talked about early on. So we're going to step aside with a 10 to Tony Grimes. We'll be back. Rattlers ball moving here early first quarter. If you love hard-boiled eggs. All right, so the good news for North Carolina, Tony Grimes popped up pretty quickly. He did go to the medical tent. Tim, what did you see on the play? Uh, the bad news, Matt, is it a bit of an ugly collision. There's Grimes there, and you see as Jennings is finishing this run, a lot of contact, and you know Grimes slow to get up. And you know he's a player. We've said it a few times now that he's a player that has a lot of ability that the Tar Heels would like to see step up and. End up being a great player and out right now. He was the number one cornerback, five star in the class of 21. Came in very highly touted, hoping to get some production out of him finally. And that's Xavier Smith making a couple players miss and a big gain for the Rattlers. Another nice gain, gain of six. And some early tempo and success for FAMU. Yeah, tempo and success and just another way to get Xavier Smith the ball in space. That's really what you're trying to do in this offense. Find green grass for these talented receivers. And, you know, Smith, who had 16 catches in a game last year against South Florida, you know, Willie Simmons kind of joked, he said, this will be an IV game. He's going to need one after the game. He's going to touch it so much. Again, tempo from Musa. Good play there by 23. Power Eccles 
for no gain. Jeremiah Pruitt, the receiver. You get the sense talking to everyone this week that it was the defense above anybody else that felt like they had something to prove, not only tonight, but for the entire season. The word we heard a lot, Matt, was embarrassed. Embarrassed by the performance a year ago. That's why I think the arrival of Gene Chizik and simplifying things and playing faster is key. Third and five for Musa in the offense. Pressure. Good throw, good catch, and another first down for FAMU. That Xavier Smith, gain of seven, continues to be active. Dante Balfour brings him down. And you can see they move him around. Here he is in the slot, just a little bit of a quick out. Find that soft spot between the corner and the linebacker, and ball's coming out quick. I think Jeremy Moose is doing an excellent job not holding on to it for too long. Seven of nine is Moose. takes a shot downfield. It's incomplete. Overthrows Travante Davis. Back to Xavier Smith for a second. The goal tonight, they said, use him, use him, use him, use him. Get all the energy you can have. He's their best player. Yeah, and a lot of talk about, you know, on the other side, hey, we need to get Josh Downs the ball. Get Josh Downs the ball. Well, the same feeling goes for Xavier Smith. He's that type of player. He's got a great feel. He's got great speed. He's got good run after the catch. And, you know, I think whether it's a touch pass, whether it's, you know, a route down the field, they want to get him the ball. Pressure on Musa, goes down, sacked by Noah Taylor. And really the first big play we've seen out of that North Carolina defense tonight, a loss of nine. Yeah, here's Noah Taylor, just a speed rush from the left side. And, you know, really Jalen Goss just doesn't hold up whatsoever. I mentioned Musa had been getting rid of the football, just holds it a beat there. And Noah Taylor, who had a really nice career, at, Played in 44 games at UVA. I think his arrival here, his experience to go along with some of the young, talented players, may be calling his name quite a bit. So we'll see if that energizes the North Carolina defense. FAMU elects to run on third and 19. That was Jennings. And so the Tar Heels are going to force a punt after the sack by Taylor. And that's what Gene Chizik wants to see. Some aggressive pass rush from the unit. He said up front, best part of the defense. Hey, if you're going to simplify things and let guys just kind of turn it loose, you want to see efforts like that out of Noah Taylor playing with speed, turning the corner, getting to the quarterback. So officials blew the whistle. Not sure for what. The official timeout. They're going to reset the play clock, it looked like, for a second. Back to play now. But do it a punt, Josh Downs to receive. Probably a wise thing to keep it away from Downs. Two punts, no returns on both. But Josh Downs returns. He is a talented player. Yeah, he's the most accomplished player for the Tar Heels. They just want to get the ball in space. Last year against Virginia, just find an open area. Look at the long speed run after the catch. So good. Then find creative ways. The fake bubble, little tunnel screen. Again, the run after the catch. Get him the ball around the line of scrimmage. Let him go to work. But he's not just a guy with kind of one you know, tool in the toolbox. Ability to stretch the field, and then also strong with your hands for a catch. This is an outstanding play, securing the ball through the through the ground, and just down somebody they need to get the ball to. I would expect him to be a factor, and they are excited about that player that just got the ball. That is the true freshman, Omari and Hampton, who is the North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. Everybody that talks about 28 Hampton said this kid's going to be special. Yeah, 220 pounds, you know, a load to get to the ground. Runs with power, has a lot of speed as well. That's a good tackle from Kendall Bowler. His brother BJ is out of tonight's game, but Kendall makes the stop on Hampton for no gain. That's an excellent tackle. As we're talking about Hampton's kind of power and, and hard to get to the ground. You know, as we expect to see him on early downs to keep him out of some pass protection issues, it's a heck of a job by Bowler. 
Already the third running back in the game for the Tar Heels. That's George Petaway, another talented true freshman. May steps up in the pocket. Good job climbing it. Pass is complete to Gavin Blackwell. And a gain of 12. Here comes the tempo first down North Carolina. Yeah, good job adjusting to the football. As you said, May, May climbing. Good job by Blackwell. The fake to Petaway. Quick throw to down. Skips that short. Falls incomplete. Yeah, you see May climb in the pocket. I, I thought this ball was going to end up being incomplete. That's a really nice job of Blackwell, who's running into the middle of the field to kind of gather himself, make that catch. And you know, as you saw earlier, Matt, rain coming down. I don't know if it has a factor, but you know, on, on the grip of Drake May, certainly skip the one on the next play to Downs. That's the freshman Hampton again up the middle. Gain of one, the Darius Fagan on the tackle. So many things for viewers here on ACC Network. If you watch a team like North Carolina tonight, you're already seeing Hampton, a true freshman. We've seen Petaway, another true freshman. Who's going to be some of these receivers that step up to complement Josh Downs? There are so many question marks that they feel they have the talent to answer. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that they feel like they have talent in Andre Green and Gavin Blackwell. But I think they're waiting to see as well. So another third down for May. They said he can run, and Drake May. Big game for the redshirt freshman quarterback. Bowler knocks him out in a gain of 42. Everyone knew Sam Howell's a runner, but they said don't sleep on Drake May's ability to run. Well, and he told us the same thing. It's a nice job of Corey Gaynor sticking with his block the center, and then how about the moves in the open field for a player that's listed at 6'5", 220. I'm really impressed with the elusiveness of Drake May in the open field. What do you want to bet? They're going to tell him to slide next time. There's no doubt they're going to tell him to slide. Yeah, like you can time. run, son, but you got to slide. Something Sam didn't do well either, but he was a heck of a player here. May, the play fake to the end zone. Touchdown, Tar Heels. Kamari Morales puts the Tar Heels on the board first. A May 42-yard run sends up the big play and the touchdown for the Tar Heels. And what I love about that, Matt, is you just had a big run. Quarterback's tired. You're late substituting a running back. And then the type of throw that it took was a little bit of touch to the tight end for the score for a young player in terms of managing the entire operation. That was really impressive. So Noah Burnett on for the extra point. Seven plays, 78 yards. And Tim, it was a jump start by Drake May that led this to happen. It was a jump start after an outstanding run. Just a great job of managing the pocket. Excellent touch to Kamari Morales. Now Tar Heel Nation is something to cheer about with Drake May. Gainer, a transfer. He's the starting center. Came over from Miami. They said after two and a half months, this kind of passion got him to be a team <laughs> captain and a leader of this team early on in his career in North you Carolina. You gotta love it. I mean, basically coming over, you know, kind of talking as a coach, and you kind of just see the passion, and they feel like it is a big upgrade at the position, and I don't know what the team needs. Seems like there's a, a camaraderie that has started with the team that Corey Gaynor has been behind. All right, what'd you see out of him on that long 42-yard well, Listen, here's run. what I like. He ends up missing his block. He kind of overruns, uh, you know, this block here to get the linebacker Fagan. And as they end up moving, it's the relentless effort just to stay on it, try to finish it. And that little bit ends up getting Drake May into the open field. And so it seems like a little thing. But rather than just quitting on it, just staying with it, sticking to it. And look, I think that's why. That stuff shows up. Teammates see it. They talk about it. And then when a, a guy who's only been here for a few months speaks up in a team meeting or runs over and talks to coaches on the sideline, everybody respects it, looks at it, appreciates it. I think that's why he's viewed as a leader right now. An impressive drive for North Carolina. 42 of the yards in the 78-yard touchdown drive came from the May run. Up 7-0. Here's Musa and the Rattlers again. And you just wonder, Tim, if, if 
This game started a little sluggish defensively for North Carolina. The offense didn't come out great. You had the sack on defense, the run by May. See if that kind of ignites the Tar Heels here in the first quarter. Yeah, you would think. I mean, between the sack and the big play, you would think that that's the case. I will say that, that FAMU's done an excellent job, I feel like, especially on in that initial drive, of having the ball come out quickly. That obviously negates the pass rush and plays into their strength of getting the ball to their athletes on the perimeter. Musa pulls it right, Reed, and a first down for FAMU. Dante Balfour on the tackle. He's in playing because Tony Grimes was injured. Go down to Kelsey with more. Well, yeah, guys, Tony Grimes was in that medical tent for quite a while and then finally went jogging into the locker room, kind of had his head down the whole time. I did just get official word he is out for the rest of the game. They're calling it an upper body injury. Obviously, very disappointing for him and this team. He was looking to be more consistent leader, so we'll see how he is going forward, but out for the game today. So a challenge on the depth for the corners early on. Balfour in, Storm Duck in, and now A.J. Davis, the pit transfer running back in for FAMU. But the ball goes to Devontae Davis in a gain of six. You see some of the stuff that FAMU's trying to do, get into empty, kind of misdirection tunnel screens, moving out of pace. You know, and I think that's why keeping it simple is what Gene Chizik wanted to do defensively. Musa again a first down, and he's doing a good job with what Willie Simmons says, drive the car, you don't need to add rims, we'll get you to where you need to be. That's a great point, Matt. Saw that from Tommy Bowden from, you know, when he played for him. Is you want the quarterback to drive the car, you referenced it in terms of making good decisions. I do think that Musa has done a good job of that. Again, stands in the pocket. That's a good shot over the middle. And a first down caught by Kobe Gross. Gain of 15. And it's a fake wide receiver screen to the outside, throw the seam. And Willie Simmons, I think, doing a nice job switching things up, calling these plays. The fake to Davis. Musa again sets his feet. Receiver falls. Let's get a fall incomplete. Javante Davis, the player that slipped. As we noted a moment ago, rain earlier this afternoon, and then the, when the game kicks, kind of opened up a little bit. So second and ten. A nice job early on by the Rattlers offense, moving it, no points to show for it. And Moose, another good shot, finds the soft spot to Manigo and another first down, FAMU. And it was the motion with Xavier Smith, a little option route that drew, drew the underneath coverage. Watch Smith draw the underneath coverage from Balfour, and that is what opens up the corner route to Manigo. Game of tempo, Moose going to throw it back, has Davis, Davis caught, touchdown Rattlers. And what a drive and what an answer by Florida A&M. Musa went right through it back on a wheel route to A.J. Davis, the pit transfer. They're going to have another look, but what a play call by Willie Simmons. Play call, that's possession. That's a foot and a knee down, and A.J. Davis, see if he can see if he possesses it all the way through. It's a touchdown, Matt. It's a touchdown and an answer. They had the mismatch on Chris Collins, took advantage of it. And just like that, we're an extra point away from Jose Romo Martinez from tying this one up late first quarter. Eight plays, 75 yards in two and a half minutes. We saw everything that they want to be about on offense on that possession. Tempo, tempo find the mismatch in school. Yeah, and it was a great job of, of play calling, you know, a variety of things, you know, some stuff on the perimeter, some, uh, you know, motions, to try to create opportunities. And then this is a called design throwback. Basically what's going to happen, A.J. Davis is going to come out of the backfield after they clear the coverage, and they end up getting the matchup that they want, fake to the back, and then you end up getting Chris Collins, who's a linebacker at 245 pounds, trying to run with, A.J. Davis, 
move the pocket play to bring the coverage that direction. It's an outstanding throw. And then it's a great catch. Typically speaking, contested catches by running backs, not typically what they do well, especially a back like Davis, who's more of a power runner. But that's a really nice grab, great throw, great call. And as you said, Matt, great answer. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the throw because Jeremy Musa, again, he won the starting job. Rashawn McKay has played ball for FAMU. Musa goes into camp, wins it, the transfer from Vanderbilt. All he's done, 11 for 15, 98 yards of touchdowns, already run the ball a couple of times, but eight different receivers, which, by the way, coming into the game with the eligibility issues, receivers were going to be a question mark. And it sounds like that is driving the car for Willie Simmons on offense, distributing the football, finding the guy that's available, and been really impressed by him, really impressed. And for a guy that hasn't played football in a while, you know, Willie Simmons said, look, he's kind of that California you know, QB, he's kind of got that cool to him. He's definitely accurate, and we've seen that so far. You want to know what driving a car looks like? Willie Simmons knows exactly what it looks like. As the quarterback at Clemson against North Carolina trailed 17 0, Woody Dantzler, the starter, got hurt. Here comes Simmons just slinging the pill. Four touchdown passes and a comeback win. And the third ranked Tigers. 38-24. We talked to Willie pregame. He's like, that's the end zone. <laughs> he was like, one in that zone, couple <laughs> in that end zone down there. He said he went into the facility this week. Some of his players had the game pulled up on YouTube watching it. I think it probably felt pretty good. It'd be like, hey, maybe coach could sling it a little bit because he did tell us the, the shoulder not the same as it was back in early 2000s. He got mad at me before the game. Can you imagine it was 22 years ago? Can you believe that? I said, man, I'm old. <laughs> I'm getting old. That's Caleb Hood. Already the fourth running back we've seen tonight. That's Gentle Hunt on the tackle. But it, it goes to belief. It, it, when you believe in your coach, when he's got skins on the wall of how he played quarterback and he gets it, it goes into belief of what the system is all about. Yeah, and, and he experienced it as a player. He's done a good job of implementing it with his this program, and he's got a quarterback playing well in that system. Quick shot to Hood to the right side. Caleb Hood is going to move the ball. Ball pops out. But it looks as if he fumbled it out of bounds before it popped back in. Nonetheless, going to be a first down for the Tar Heels. Eric Smith was the player that forced the fumble. I think this is interesting, Matt. We, we've seen three running backs now in a few drives. Four, actually, you're right. And, and when you when you think about this, and Caleb Hood's a guy that's got a ton of talent, protecting the football, knowing your responsibilities, and, and doing it the right way. I think the Tar Heels are looking for someone to emerge as the go-to guy. They've called Hood the most explosive of the backs. That's Hampton, the true freshman, and again, and again, a three tackled by Abu Banagora. Dre, we've seen Hood, we've seen Petaway, we've seen DJ Jones, Mari, and Hampton. I think it's a great opportunity, you know, behind a, a relatively experienced offensive line, a young quarterback. It's a great opportunity for these young backs. Look, Phil Longo, offensive coordinator, said they want to play 18 to 22 players a game. They are certainly on pace for that. Drake does a nice job across his body, finding Josh Downs. Another first down for the Tar Heels. Kendall Bowler on the tackle. Yeah, move the pocket play. What's interesting now, you know, I think there's, you know, when you look at Downs crossing the formation on a, on a boot play, you know, Drake May came out of high school as the traditional pocket passer, and you know some of the more explosive plays we've seen out of this offense so far have been with Drake May on the move. Two first downs, delayed draw. That's Omari and Hampton. There goes the freshman. Gain of 11. Got into that second level of the defense, and this kid's six foot two twenty. He's a load. And you see just the way he finishes. I, I like the patience there. A bit of a lag draw, a little delay by Hampton in the backfield, and then good finish. Blitz coming. May picks it up, and a good job getting it to his receiver. Makes a man miss. That's Gavin Blackwell. And here comes the Phil Longo offense gain of 12. Lovey Jenkins forces him out. This is awesome right here. Corner blitz. Watch Drake May see this. This is a side adjustment throwing hot. I believe they have a run call there. He just spits the ball outside so you don't run right into the teeth of that blitz. That is a big time quarterback play right there of seeing it pre-snap by Drake May. That was awesome. 
Each play, each possession gets a little bit more comfortable. As North Carolina now six plays on this drive, four first downs. Ball inside the 25, may get a throw again. Has a receiver wide open, and that is Bryson Nesbitt, North Carolina. Touchdown, Tar Heels. Twenty-three yard reception and, and, and already Tim two touchdowns both to the tight end It seems as if he's comfortable with the big guys catching the ball Yeah, comfortable with the big guys obviously, you know with some usage of a formation they get some confusion in the secondary and Drake may seeing it perfectly right now for Phil Longo's offense So seven plays 75 yards 252 off the clock now we're having fun, Timmy. Three possessions, three touchdowns. Let's go. We are having fun. Here's what happens. They run a corner with this tight end here. He's going to go first. And in the wake of that release, Nesbitt's going to come to the post. It causes confusion. You have two going for one. And Nesbitt is wide open. May sees it perfectly. Great call. Great execution. And you're right. Now the tight ends are happy. And Nesbitt is a guy. He's a receiver. I think they feel like they can use him as a excuse me, as a tight end, they feel like they can use him as a receiver. And when we asked Drake May about, you know, guys he's excited about, we all know about Josh Downs, he said, you know, Bryson Nesbitt's a pretty good player. Nesbitt came up three times, from the quarterback, from the offensive coordinator, from the head coach. And so you know they like him here. Nesbitt, Kamari Morales caught the first touchdown. So if you're keeping track at home, if you're a North Carolina fan and say, you know what, we know we've got talent. Who do we need to keep an eye on this year? Nesbitt won. We saw Amari and Hampton. It's just about the guys that have these star rankings attached to them coming in, getting experience, and getting comfortable. Yeah, and let's face it, too, Matt. You know, <laughs> opened up talking about, look, Sam Howell's not here. You know, and I think there's a tendency sometimes when a when a great player at a school graduates, even if you've got, you know, a talented player behind him or replacing him, there's still that uncertainty. But I think Mac Brown's pretty comfortable about playing football still without Sam Howell. Yeah, you know, media people like you, you see, like, you know, Sam Howell's <laughs> gone. All of a sudden, North Carolina's not going to be any good. Don't talk about him. But certainly a good start for the young quarterback. Seven of nine, 99 yards and two touchdowns early. We just get word that there was a lightning strike in the area that caused a couple of our cameras to have to shut down by rule. But for now, the game will continue. But if you notice, the camera angles looking perhaps a little unique than what you're typically used to on a, on a broadcast. It's because of a lightning strike in the area. When we get the all clear, we'll power them back up and give you the traditional angle. But for now, this is what we have. North Carolina up 14-7, under 30 here in the first quarter. A.J. Davis, the carry, power Eccles. He's had a busy first quarter, brings it down after a gain of two. see an injured player for FAMU running off the field. Their offensive line depth right now isn't great because of some of the certification issues, so they can't afford to lose many players. There's Brian Crawford. Quarter, Tim Hasselbeck, Matt Berry, Kelsey Riggs here, ACC football prime time. North Carolina in their season opener. Take it on FAMU, 14-7. Jeremy Moose in at quarterback for FAMU, and he's had a good start, and that continues to David Manigo over the middle in a gain of 12. It does continue, Matt. I mean, he did an excellent job of getting through his progression. They actually started to the left, had to drift, give a little bit of ground, and it's a nice shot on a deep in cut. And again, if you're just joining us here, start of the second quarter, you notice a wide shot on your television screen. We had lightning in the area. So we had to cut down some of the cameras for safety protocol. So we'll give you the view from all 22, some of the end zone cams. But right now, the cameras we have are the cameras you get is A.J. Davis off to the right side. Cedric Gray, one of the leaders of this defense, on the tackle. 
First time we've called Sad's name tonight. It is. And Matt, you know, the fans get a chance to look at the angle we get to look at, which is a pretty yeah, nice cool. one. They can go up to the see TV, it draw the telestration Listen, with a Sharpie. People have basically Just get said, Tim Hasselbeck. It's like a mega cast, essentially, Matt. We're going to give you everything you want. Who knew Eddie Placey called up a mega cast for the primetime opener? Wants to give off the left side. A good job by North Carolina's defense. No gain. With Desmond Edmonds on the tackle. No gain on the play. You know, and FAMU offensively, Matt, has done a good job, I think, of getting the ball out quickly, finding space to get the ball to their fast receivers. And kind of saying out of known passing situations where they do need to push the ball down the field a little bit. This is just the second one they've had of the night. And the last time they had one, we saw Noah Taylor get a sack. So third and six. Again, depth going to be an issue tonight for FAMU. Wonder as the game goes on if fatigue will be a factor. Came out of the gates fast. Moose at a throw. Takes a shot downfield. Misses his receiver. Manigo, the intended receiver, overshoots him. And the Rattlers are going to punt. Actually thought that was another good throw by Musa. Manigo, I think, kind of just misjudged the football a little bit. Maybe you know, had to adjust behind him a bit, but they had it. And again, Fam, you're doing a good job of calling plays to get guys open and just not able to connect. A good stop for the Tar Heels. See if Josh Downs here takes an opportunity. There's going to be early movements on Florida A&M. We'll back them up five yards. Ball start. Kicking team for 36. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. All right, so we will continue to update you on the camera situation. Tim, we were able to locate a camera from the truck that is not a manned camera which is why you start seeing a little zoom in and zoom out. That's, I think I thought that was your that's your, fun. I right? thought that was your personal Instagram camera that you you travel with. Is that right? I don't travel with an Instagram camera. I travel <laughs> with a cell phone. That's a camera first downs makes a man miss and Josh Downs does a good job getting the ball across the 17 yard line. So that's where we'll see Drake May 51 yard punt nine return back to Chapel Hill after this. That was a go route I thought should have been caught. So good start for Drake May. That's Hampton off the left side. Here goes the true freshman Amari and Hampton. Boy, he's not afraid to lower his shoulder and deliver a hit at a gain of 13. Kamani King on the tackle. And an excellent job of the Tar Heels kind of sealing the perimeter to get Hampton to the edge. And we've said it earlier, at 220 pounds, he is a load. And Got the ability to finish with some power. Did you drop a Natron means last night during I, our Asian fusion dinner? I said, you know, I did. I said, listen, this, this fusion dinner is phenomenal. And on top of it, we might see a young Natron means. All things happening. May take it a shot. Incomplete. Josh Downs, the intended receiver. Intended and that was King on the coverage. I like what Phil Longo did there. Rip off a big run, play action, take a shot to Josh Downs if you've kind of been working him on some underneath stuff and just not able to connect. Florida a and doing a good job of, of staying deep, and then Drake May leaves that one just a little bit inside. Talked to Longo before the game, said early on he was getting a high percentage, get Drake comfortable. We saw a couple of shots early on. But high percentage passes for May early on. There's another one. There's Morales, the tight end, already scored a touchdown, gain of 14, and a first down UNC. And what I love so far, Matt, is how much we're seeing out of the tight ends. It's really not been something that we've seen North Carolina do offensively in recent years, but it's been a big part of it tonight. Quick shot, quick throw, caught J.J. Jones. Winsome Frazier knocks him out. Two plays, two first downs. Pass is complete to number two, Gavin Blackwell. Game of 10 on the play. First down, Tar. Well, speaking of the tight ends, we, we mentioned 
We've seen Morales now, but we've also mentioned Nesbitt, who's in the game, lined up in the slot, and you know, he drew an Evan Ingram comparison from Phil Longo in our meeting with him. Made a throw, flag on the play. And he just knows to go down after good pressure from the FAMU defense. We'll check the flag. Offside, defense number 97, lined up in the neutral zone. It's a five-yard penalty, first down. So penalty on the Rattlers, moves the change for North Carolina. And that would be one there, Matt. You talk about a young player learning. You know, you see the flag, get a sense of the offsides, knowing that no matter what, you know, penalty on the defense, you've had the ability to take a shot. We see Aaron Rodgers do it. We've seen Tom Brady do it. Sam Howell actually did an excellent job of it here. See that area of Drake May's game maybe develop over time. It was DJ Jones, start of the game at running back, brought down by Fagan. An early part of the season around the country. You know, it starts in earnest next week, week zero, you get 11 games, kind of get your taste of college football. We're going to see this out of a lot of teams, breaking in new quarterbacks, new running backs, receivers. Those first couple of weeks are finding out what you're going to have the rest of the way. Yeah, it can build a lot of confidence for the player as well. And again, another shot across the middle. Again, it's a tight end. That's Nesbitt. And a first down, North Carolina gain of seven. Yeah, and it's going to look like the ball's thrown behind him, but it's actually an awesome job of Drake May trying to slow Nesbitt down to protect him from the hit. So the quarterback, you want to be the eyes for the receiver. And that's why the ball was behind. What a grab there by Downs. Adjusting to the back shoulder throw and a gain of seven. And you can see how tempo and then just number of guys to throw the football to for Drake May, how this offense can be a challenge and why they're looking for guys outside of Downs and Nesbitt. We've seen J.J. Jones a few times now. Ball spotted at the 24. That's Hampton up the middle. There goes Omari and Hampton, and the true freshman takes it to the six-yard line. Kendall Baller missed the tackle, gain of 18 for Hampton. Still too early for Natron Means, Matt. Still too early because that's a good finish. Good job blocking up front. Two backs in the backfield and Hampton hitting it hard downhill. Tar Heels moving the ball again, again to give to Hampton. And he's met immediately at the front. Johnny Chaney on the tackle. Natron refried Means. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, how much did you want me to say that so you could do that? I mean, just let's be well, real. I, to be candid, I was waiting for the touchdown, but I figured, you know what? Get it in now so you know you get it in. They have played four backs. So you, you know, you were, you were rolling the dice. <laughs> Play your cards right. You'll be the fifth. Ball at the six. Hampton, what a great mm. tackle. The Darius Fagan, one of the better defenders, met him right at the hole. There is a flag on the play. This is a big time collision. See 27 Fagan playing downhill and. There is a flag on the play. And again, if you're just joining us and you're wondering about. Substitution infraction, defense 12 minutes on the field. After this, second down. Get the call there from Mike Roach, their official for tonight. Another penalty on FAMU. Do want to remind the viewers, cameras because of lightning had to. Take a couple of them down, which is why you're seeing that high angle yeah, view. As soon as the 30 minutes expires of no lightning strike, we'll get everybody back to work and back on the cameras. For now, we'll go high angle for you here. Second and goal for the Tar Heels. Both tight ends in the game, Morales and Nesbitt. Caleb Hood in the backfield. They give to Hood, and again, that defensive line for FAMU's done a good job here. Goal to go, getting those uh, running back stopped. Loss of one. They have been active, you know, and that's one of the things you have to do when you're undersized is you want to, you know, kind of slant and move in a kind of a goal line environment with Drake May under center. Nice job of getting some penetration. So now third and goal, North Carolina. The 
the fake to Hood. May rolls out, makes the guy miss to the end zone, incomplete. That's the third tight end, John Coppenhaver, the intended receiver. Yeah, Winsome Fraser on the coverage. Yeah, and it's a really good job by Drake May. You know, he's trying to get Nesbitt in the flat right away. He's not available to him, and so he ends up looking to Coppenhaver, who's coming across the back of the end zone. He's able to outrun the, the contain. Thought he delivered a nice football. Coppenhaver should have come down with it. They're going to send him back out there. Here we go, Tim. They're going to go forward on fourth down. And I'm looking at Nesbitt. May. Forced out of the pocket to the end zone. Touchdown, Tar Heels. Gavin Blackwell on fourth and goal. Scores for North Carolina. Now up 20 to 7. And this is a second reaction play by Drake May that's really, really impressive. I think in terms of the curiosity of the type of player that you're going to see, it's not going to be a statue in the pocket, clearly, when Drake May is under center. Yeah, his mobility, I would say, early on here in this first half, probably the most impressive thing we've seen. We knew he had the arm, heard about the ability to be mobile, and he's shown it tonight. And I think a bit of a surprise, Matt. So 12 plays, 83 yards. Drake May now 12 of 16, 143 yards and three touchdowns. And it's Drake May's ability to move. He's trying to work the tight end, escape to the left. Little Patrick Mahomes out of Drake May to the end zone. If you love hard... You know, that Florida State LSU game, Matt, I, I think these games, these out of conference games this year uh, for these ACC teams are really important. Not that they aren't every year, but I uh, just think with the, the talk about where the conference is, there's no doubt that those will mean a lot. Yeah, so just over seven and a half in the first half, and that's a nice run by Terrell Jennings. He's running hard tonight for the Rattlers, forced out of bounds after a gain of 21. Kamari Young, the key block to spring Jennings, in a nice gain for FAMU. Yeah, and good burst, and then a good job of blocking down the field, you know, by the receivers, and it, it's Young kind of springing him for another 10 yards. Another big hole in a... Flag on the play there is the give to Jennings. Dante Balfour brings him down. We'll see if there was a reason there was a big hole there for Jennings. Holding. Offense number 62. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's Charles Davis. He was lower on the on the two deep. But again, we mentioned the issues with depth for FAMU. Brian Crawford started at guard, went out injured, and Davis is now in. And I thought you actually said a big hold. And I thought, Matt, that's pretty good that you can see it in, in real time. I mean, if that's what you thought like I said, we'll go with that it. outside there, just grabbing a little too much outside. Miles Murphy, who's one of these players on this defensive line that certainly looks the part, and they feel like it's going to be a really nice player. Musa, quick stop, quick throw. I'm going to gain a 10. That's Smith. That was one of the concerns, the safety concerns the teams had when the list came out of players that weren't eligible. At one point, they thought maybe seven offensive linemen total were going to be able to make the trip. And we've already seen an injury tonight, so down on that depth there at the left guard position. Yeah, we've seen the injury, and so now all of a sudden, it, you know, you run out of bodies quickly. And Look, that can be a concern with offensive line. Remember in the COVID season, there was minimum requirements for healthy offensive linemen, and... You know, but they do just out without one starter entering into tonight, and I got another backup in. And here's Musa, again quick throw, and again to Smith. Pass, One of the remarkable Smith. things about Xavier Smith, he was a walk-on when he got here. Now they talk about him as an All-Conference player, an All-American. They want to get as much out of their most talented players they can, and we've certainly seen that here in the first half. You know, it, it's incredible to think that he was a walk-on. You think about his production and, you know, plenty of NFL scouts that are in the building tonight, you know, and my conversations pregame, 
definitely aware of who he is and what he's accomplished. Third and six, pressure on Musa, gets the ball away, and a good job by Carolina's defense to close on A.J. Davis after a gain of two. Power Eccles having a big night, brings him down. And it looks like the offense is staying out on the field, and I like this decision by Willie Simmons here. Even if you're just trying to get the defense to jump. So fourth and three. Play clock under 10. And there's the jump that Florida A&M was looking for. And a complete pass. That was Vahasek who jumps. Raymond Vahasek, one of the leaders up front, did exactly what FAMU wanted him to do. Offside, defense number 51. The penalties decline. Result of the play is a first down. There's Vahasek there. And like these are the mistakes that I feel like we've seen the Star Hill defense make in the past that Gene Chizik, by keeping things simple, wants to eliminate. I mean, a, a veteran player, guy who's played a lot of football and been a good player for the Tar Heels, in that environment where you know a hard count is going to be, you know, part of the equation for FAMU to, to, to jump off sides, it's got to drive you crazy. So they declined the penalty. Darian Oxendine had a big game, so they'll keep the ball. Here comes the pressure. Down goes Musa. Power Eccles. Well, he's been all over the field in the first half. He really has, and I think that's why you know, they're excited about this linebacker group. It's Power Eccles, it's Cedric Gray, Ryder Dilworth, we'll see, but Power Eccles has been the guy that's shown up a bunch so far tonight. Loss of 12 on the play. Let's go down to Kelsey. Yeah, guys, you're talking about that linebacking core. They called him the heart of the defense. He said these guys are intentional. They love the game. They want to lead and be good. And they said if this defense and this ship is going to sail, it starts with those two in the middle. Gene Chizik said he can call anything with the eight guys up front. He believes he's got eight players. Moose has got a wide open player, and it falls incomplete. Jamari A. Sharid, the intended receiver. Cedric Gray closed on it. Speaking of the linebackers, Cedric that's Gray Cedric Gray. Kind of awareness. Well, look at the closing speed. You know, kind of, you know, late getting out there and then a good job of not panicking, Three, reading seven, the receivers, down. you know, hands and eyes. It's good recovery by Cedric Gray. I asked Gene Chizik, I said, if I told you to write down the one thing you wanted to get out of tonight's season opener. He said, respond well in chaos. And this tempo and this FAMU team shorthanded has come out here and moved the ball pretty well. So it has been chaotic at times. Third and 22. Musa, good shot. Picks up quite a bit of it. Oxendine, the receiver. Storm duck on the coverage, gain of 13. Yeah, now I think even though it's it's fourth and long, you know, fourth and eight, fourth and nine, kind of in no man's land. That's why they're going for it. Tempo, Musa, caught. First down, Oxendine. What a drive he's had. What a throw and a first down, FAMU. It's a great throw. They're, they're essentially clearing out the inside and running an in cut. And that's an outstanding catch by Oxendine. We've seen him do that a few times tonight. So here come the Rattlers moving the ball under three in the first half. Musa checks it down to the back. Terrell Jennings has space, and Jennings takes it inside the five. It's a heck of a play by Jeremy Musa. He's working Oxendine on his left side on a corner route, gets off of it because he doesn't like the leverage, comes all the way across the field to find the back for the check down. North Carolina, all three timeouts, tempo for the Rattlers, ball spotted at the four, So Chris Collins on the tackle of Jennings. You know Here, here's the corner route, and look at the eyes early on by Musa. He's trying to work this, doesn't like the relationship, comes off of it, gets to the back. That's a really good job and poise for a quarterback that doesn't have a ton of game experience at a new school on the road. He's been impressive. 12th play of the drive for Florida A&M. McLeod in the backfield. 
And that's McLeod. Sutter steps his way off the right side, pushes through, and Fam U back on the board. Two fourth down conversions, one via penalty, negated with the play. Five yard touchdown, and Jalen McLeod and short handed F Fam U. Now an extra point away from a one score game. You know, we're talking about the power that some of the backs have for North Carolina. With Jalen McLeod at 230 pounds, just absolutely just kind of kept his legs moving, pushing into the end zone. And one thing I didn't think we'd see would be the power run game out of FAMU, but they get it there. And the finish by McLeod, keeping the Rattlers in it. Another touchdown pass. Drake May been impressive so far. May over the middle to Nesbitt. Passes complete to number 18, Bryson Nesbitt. Nesbitt scored a touchdown, had a nice completion early on. Tight end's been busy tonight. Three I catches, Zero. 37 Zero. yards in the touchdown. But two-minute drill, three timeouts left for Phil Longo in the offense. And an opportunity here for May to add more. Again, over the middle. J.J. Jones on the reception, spreading the ball around at a first down gain of 11. And this is an awesome opportunity for a young player to get the situational football as the clock stops with a player losing his helmet. You know, just operating this, communicating you know, from the sideline to your teammates, knowing when you've got to stop the clock. Great opportunity for Drake May. That's Petaway on the reception, and Florida A&M, a great job Reading that play out of the backfield, King and Major both made the tackle on a loss of five. North Carolina takes its first time out of the half. So North Carolina going to take their first time out of the half. We were talking about it during the commercial break, Tim. When, when you get, when your first game of the season, you want to get out healthy, you want to get out with a win, and you want to get out with coachable moments. And I think the, the, the victory is still uncertain yet. We've got plenty of football left. It's a close game, 21-14. But you're getting some coaching moments in the first half with a very young team. Yeah, and you always hear coaches talk about they try to create situations in practice. You know, you mentioned earlier Gene Chizik. I want to see how my team responds, my defense responds, you know, in the chaos of it. You know, Mac Brown will talk about, you know, how important the last five of the first half are and the first five of the second half. And so I think... You know, as much as you try to harp on that and communicate that in a practice environment, there's nothing like this for a young player and a young offense working together. So second and 15 now. Two timeouts remain for North Carolina. Delayed handoff to Petaway. Another talented true freshman they like. And Petaway, a flag on the play. The Florida A&M sideline seems to think it's going to be a North Carolina. Holding, Holding, offense number 63, 10-yard penalty, second down. And it's Ed Montalas flagged for holding, so that play negated. And more yardage off for North Carolina. And here's Montalas, and there was definitely some help from the FAMU sideline. Now, sometimes you just, you know, just need to let him go. So second and 18. May brought down by Dre Jones. And North Carolina going to spend their second time out. So we know we're making the debut and seeing the debut of Drake May. He follows Sam Howell, who owns just about every record here at North Carolina. And he was such a good player, as well liked by his teammates, and really burst onto the scene right away and I think you know one of the things that's been different for Drake May is you know Sam Howell came in right away and played Drake May has been able to watch Sam Howell be coached by this coaching staff and so it's different and then a great you know relationship between the guys when Drake was named the starter Sam you know gave him a phone call congratulated on him and basically said okay now's the opportunity now go to work and so far tonight Done a pretty good job of that, 15 to 19, and thrown three touchdowns. And as you see, Sam Howell last year 
only one time had a half where he threw three touchdown passes. And look, it's not fair to sit here and, and draw any comparisons, but you can't tell the story of Mac Brown 2.0 in North Carolina without the fact that he got here and had a great true freshman quarterback and Sam Howell to get this thing going and now Drake May baton pass to him does a good job standing in the pocket to the sideline overthrows Josh Downs on third and 18 and now North Carolina is going to have to punt here comes Florida A&M 53 seconds left move the ball three timeouts listen that was an ugly two minute drive for the Tar Heels that is why it's important to have those you know, you, you don't want to have it look like that a week from now at App State. You know, you don't want to have it look like that later in the season. And so, look, there's going to be teachable moments there for the Tar Heels and Drake May offensively of how to handle those situations when you get the ball back with two minutes. So Kiernan to punt, Xavier Smith deep to receive. Fields it at the 15, hit immediately. That is good, clean special teams play there by Obi Agbuna who brings him down. What about Florida A&M in their last possession? Oh, listen, now they get a chance and they were on fire last time we saw this offense out there. Jeremy Musa has been impressive. The receivers around him have been outstandingly impressive. Getting through his progression, finding the checkdowns. Jeremy Musa has been really impressive and then a powerful finish and with plenty of time still on the clock, timeouts at their disposal, I expect Willie Simmons to go after it here. Kelsey. Yeah, I got to talk to Jeremy Musa about this opportunity, and you guys talked a little bit about the journey he's had. He said, look, this isn't how I expected it to play out, but he does have some starts from junior college where he was phenomenal, guys. But he said getting this opportunity for the first time, he said he owes it to this staff a lot, the credit that he has for being here at this point now, Matt. Nine different receivers have caught a ball from Musa in an impressive first half. He's going to go right over the middle. Had a man open. That was Manigo. Pass intended for David Manigo. We do want to give you, I know those of you who have been waiting with bated breath on your couches, camera crews are back. Boom. You were going to see ISOs like that on Storm Duck. Our boy Kyle's going to. Get back to punching some cameras. It's going to be a hell of a broadcast here the rest of the way. So 41 seconds left. Florida AM, three timeouts. Moose again takes a shot. It's going to be picked off by Storm Duck. We ISO Duck. He comes up with the play. And Musa looks to be hurt. I'm sorry, not Musa. That offensive lineman looks as if he's down. But Duck again, the interception. Yeah, Storm Duck had, had jumped the underneath coverage a few times earlier in the game. The underneath route just sinks. And as they're trying to high-low, Storm Duck does a good job of sinking underneath that corner route, making a play on the football, creating a huge turnover, and giving Drake May another shot. So we'll keep an eye on the injured player. Looks as if it's Cesar Reyes, another one of the offensive linemen. And the depth up front for the Rattlers coming into this game wasn't great, and now they're starting right tackle. Moved from left guard, where he was originally started, over to right tackles down. And this was Willie Simmons' biggest fear. So it's been a really remarkable first half for Florida A&M. Shorthanded, Moose has had a great first half. North Carolina now going to get an opportunity with 31 seconds left and one timeout. And ball on the 21-yard line. And Again, 25 players. Did not certify, which means eligible for tonight's game. Three of them starters. So the depth was going to be an issue. And, and one of the biggest concerns when all of this came out, the offensive line depth. And they had seven or eight coming into this game. There's a little bit of uncertainty about who was prepared to play. Obviously, you're talking about some freshmen, maybe some guys that hadn't gotten a ton of reps. 
That's the second offensive lineman out because Brian Crawford went out earlier. That's Cesar Reyes out now. And so now you're talking about with an offense that has been dealing. Definitely down some offensive linemen. So 31 seconds left for North Carolina. Bobbles the snap. May does a good job. Gets it to Downs. Gets out of bounds. Clock will stop when some Frazier takes him out. Gain of nine. You can see the arm strength that Drake May has because as he bobbles that snap, he's late on the throw, but still has enough power and juice to get it there in time before Downs out of bounds. Again, the one timeout. Second down. May. Force from the pocket, points to the end zone, finds a receiver underneath. That's Downs again. First down, North Carolina. Isaiah Major on the tackle. Here's another late half opportunity for the quarterback. Great opportunity. The clock has, has, has stopped for them to spot the football, but now first down, go ahead and get everybody ready to stop the clock. And Drake's going to clock it to bring up second down. First two minute drive was not great. Another opportunity because of the forced turnover from the defense. Yeah, and that's a great opportunity there as well because he actually misses Nesbitt on a shallow cross coming into vision to his left, escapes outside the pocket, finds downs. And so now everybody's all over the place. But because of the first down, the clock is going to stop. And so you have an opportunity to waste that down by spiking the football. DJ Jones in the backfield in the process as well. It's Petaway, excuse me, Petaway in the backfield in the process, protect the timeout. And whistles before the snap. Before the snap, FAMU takes its first time out of the half. Your 30 second timeout. Tim, still football left to be played here, but give me an assessment. In this first half, what you've seen, we'll start with Willie Sims and his squad. Listen, I've been really impressed, you know, with it being uncertainty about if they were traveling here. If there's any question if they were going to be intimidated or not bring their best. We've seen an awesome effort from them on both sides of the football. Offensively, have been really impressive, especially by Jeremy Musa. In terms of the defense, we've seen great effort. You know, I think when you look at you know, North Carolina, we're, we're obviously talking about a bunch of players that are that are new to, to getting playing time. Drake May has certainly had some really good moments. We've seen a bunch of the backs get opportunities, receivers and tight ends stepping up. You know, I think if there would be an area where you're wondering, okay, could they play better, that defensive side of the ball for the Tar Heels? But ultimately, man, we've got a one-score game here, and it's been really competitive. Empty backfield for May, second down, looks to the end zone, and he's going to want that one back because Josh Downs was wide open. However, his knee hit the ground. He'll be ruled down third and goal, and that's where North Carolina will take their final timeout. Yeah, and Drake May knows it. Big player. He's running a little option route to Josh Downs. Defender Fagan in his face, and he just doesn't keep him up. And... You know, you have to navigate the defender that's unblocked, that, that's in your throwing lane. But you got to do everything you can to keep downs up because, honestly, you keep them up, it's a walk-in. Again, coachable moments. Coachable moments. And, listen, you, you know, as a quarterback, you know, that's part of massaging, you know, the situation is free runners. You're, you're going to face free runners. Oftentimes, the quarterback's job is to take care of the guy that you can't account for in protection. And you take care, you, you account for that guy by beating him with the throw. And so, you know, at Drake May's size, it's an advantage that he has to be able to see over guys, to be able to find throwing lanes, and he's able to find the lane, just not keep him up. So we talk about, for both teams, early season learning spot. Here for Drake, no timeouts, can't take the sack. Got to get rid of, the, rid of the ball, clock stop, either have an opportunity to score or get points going into the half. Yeah, and so now you know the situation here. Probably you're only down, right? So eight seconds. You can move somewhat. You have the, the field goal is the guarantee. So you know you've got the field goal guarantee. Really what you want to do is just throw on time so you have time to kick the field goal. If you do escape, know that time, the, the clock can come into play. 
May right to the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. That was Josh Downs' fourth reception on that drive. That one for the touchdown. A good execution by UNC as they get a little bit of breathing room going into the half. Now up 27-14. That's May's fourth touchdown pass of the first half. Pretty good start. Throw four touchdowns in your first half. Have some learning moments. And it's a nice job of, of Phil Longo, offensive coordinator, designing a play to get Josh Downs kind of behind some traffic to free him up, find your best player, get him open down in the red zone. So five plays, 21 yards. It was all set up by the Storm Duck interception on a defense that needed something to go their yeah, way. Complimentary football, that's fine, it's mad. A failed two-minute drive. The defense comes up big, give you the possession you know, of the football. And then here's Josh Downs. Run some traffic in here. And so versus man coverage, just outflank the defense is the defender has to run through that traffic, avoid it. That just gives Downs enough leverage to the sideline and then good accurate throw by Drake May. As you said, touchdown number four. And he knows, almost kind of hard on himself, like, hey, I should have thrown you one earlier on, on the little option route, but I got you back, number 11. So a good first half for the redshirt freshman. Josh Downs set throughout camp during the, the battle between Drake May and Jacoby Criswell. He's like, look, we've got two really good quarterbacks here that can throw the ball. I'm not worried who they throw out there. We're still going to have a really good offense. And Downs targeted nine times tonight, six receptions, 41 yards, and the touchdown, which you'd expect at a returning star receiver in a Belitnikoff watch list. And you think about it in this day and age of transfers, really good quarterback, leaves the program, a receiver that's used to catching a lot of balls and playing with a really talented quarterback. The fact that Josh Downs stuck around, looks like it's probably a pretty good decision and, and you see why he was comfortable with the quarterbacks. So we head to the first, end of the first half, some conversation there between the players. So here are the debuts between Sam Howell and Drake May. That's a game body of work. Now that's also against an SEC opponent in South Carolina, 15 to 24, 245, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And prior to that, hadn't really done anything impressive, so to speak. In fact, they were in danger of doing another three and out. Skipped the ball to Josh Downs. It was third and nine in the 42-yard run. Kind of got the momentum going for Drake May in the North Carolina offense. So FAMU won the toss they received in the first half. North Carolina is going to get the ball here to start the second half, and they're going to get good field position because that ball is going to go out of bounds. They'll get the ball to 35. Let's go down to Kelsey Riggs with FAMU's head coach. Coach Simmons, you wanted your guys to come out here and compete. We saw that in the first half. What was your message in the locker room? Well, we told them you know, we, we felt we could play with these guys. And uh, I think we showed everybody for 30 minutes that we can. So we got 30 more minutes to continue to fight. And uh, you know, we, we, we tackle on defense, and uh, we don't turn the ball over that last drive on offense. Um, it's a much closer ball game. But I think these guys got a little more fight left in them. One of your biggest concerns coming into this game, missing 20 plus players, was the health and safety. You're now down two of your offensive linemen. We just heard are ruled out for the rest of the game, as well as a wide receiver. How do you handle that? Well, the next man up, you know, um, these guys want to come up and compete, and that's what we're doing. And, um, you know, uh, hopefully we can get those guys back. But, uh, you know, that was one of the concerns coming up that we were a little, a little short on offensive linemen, losing two. So that, that throws some young guys into action that. Uh, you got to grow up real fast. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Kelsey, Coach Simmons, thank you. We'll update you on that side of the ball when FAMU gets it. First things first, Drake May in the offense. DJ Jones in the backfield after a gain of six to bring up second and four. And a quick toss there to Copenhaver. Saw him early on. And kind of one of the staples of the Phil Longo offense, run, short route, move the chains. Yeah, it's, it's a zone blocking scheme where the tight end comes across the formation and kicks out, and then you slip him into the flat. Nice, easy completion, and more of the tight end in this offense, which has been a bit of a surprise. Ball back in Rattler's territory. There's Josh Downs with a slip screen. He does a good job. 
to get a gain of six on first down. Timothy Williams on the tackle. That's another one of those things you see out of this offense, that fake bubble screen, and then you kind of come back in towards the offensive line and run a tunnel screen, and seen Josh Downs break a couple of those and take them to the house. May the fake has wide open Copenhaver. Copenhaver lowers his shoulder. And I tell you what, if I've gathered, garnered one thing out of the first two quarters and early on here in the third, tight ends are going to be a big part of this offense this year for UNC. I mean, a huge part of it, and we've seen three of them now. You know, just make big plays, and Phil Longo doing a good job of designing stuff to get them wide open. And go back down to the ground game. Dre Jones on the tackle. DJ Jones got the start. He's been banged up early in his career. Coaching staff said he had a really good camp. He's reliable, and he earned the start tonight. Oh, and we've seen all the backs play. It's been a busy night in the backfield. And I think DJ Jones got the start because kind of knows everything. He's good in pass protection. He's secure with the football. I do believe that there's probably you know, more upside with some of the younger backs, and I think that's why we're seeing them. May, can he make it five? Takes it to the corner, keeps it himself. Helicopter. And they're talking about it. They are discussing this, and they're going to mark it down at the one. Nadarius Fagan is who sent Drake May airborne. Let's have another look. I don't know that that's not a touchdown. Listen, live I thought it was a touchdown. He's in bounds that's when he leaves the ground. And Max calling a timeout. He's running down to the line judge to get a timeout. He's going to get it. They're going to take another look at this, and I would be stunned if this wasn't ruled a touchdown. And yeah, Max heated up. The coaching moment here for us, for Mac and Longo. Again, that's another, he didn't, he didn't dive. We, we saw that earlier in the, an earlier run. He's thrown his body out there. Tim, what do you think? I think it's going to be called a touchdown. I think it's a touchdown. I'm not positive why. I think Mac is wondering why it wasn't stopped to be looked at. But he leaves the ground in the field of play. I need your official vote, touchdown or not. It's good, Mac. It's <laughs> right. good. We'll let you know on the other side of the break. Third and goal, call stands. Drake made down at the one-yard line. Omari and Hampton, the true freshman, he's going to clean it up in a touchdown Carolina. The first of Omari and Hampton's young career. North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year gets in. Now 34-14 UNC. It's a good downhill run by Hampton, you see the power down in the goal line. And I think that, you know, with how North Carolina had thrown the ball down inside the five, you know, the fear of them throwing it also spread that defense out. So a touchdown right before the half. First possession, North Carolina started with the ball. They take it right down five plays, or seven plays, 65 yards, two minutes, 50 seconds. So, Tim, we were, we were talking about whether or not the goal line extends. The goal line in college football does not extend. So the goal line in college football does not extend. And so Drake May leaves the ground inbound, so he's inbounds. I think because that ball was in his right arm as he spins, I kind of thought that it was still in the field of play before, you know, when he crossed the goal line and then goes out of bounds. But Marion Hampton... Saying, they let me in on the action. Drake's thrown four. Yeah, Drake's has, he has okay, enough. Okay, you've had enough of that. Give me the football. Yeah, good. Four touchdowns on the two freshmen. Let me score. Drake May is smiling. He's having fun. But I, 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 there's two instances where I'm betting Phil Longo and Mac Brown are going to light him up and film. It is for the same reason Sam Howe got this early on. I know you can't take the player out of the player, but it's early. It's early. There are scenarios where you say, hey, listen, whatever it takes to get the first down, whatever it takes to get in the end zone, there is no question that there are elements of protecting yourself. 
in saying that, Matt, you know, after a season, and people knew what type of player Sam Howe was, okay, then you can start sliding. As you're a young player trying to prove yourself, get the respect of your teammates, I don't mind it at all. And you do bring up a good point, because in your first start, you've got to show, you can do anything you want in practice. But when the lights are on and the game's being played, you've got to earn the trust of everyone that's out there Listen, with you. When number 10 drops back, there are a lot of guys laying it on the line to protect him. There are a lot of guys that are selling out in pass protection. You know, tight ends, running backs, offensive linemen, receivers blocking for guys down the field. And so I do think there is an element of it. Now, let me say this. I think he's done it. He proved that he's, he, he's capable and willing to do it. Now you say, okay, you showed it to them. They got it. From now on, let's get down. Yeah, let's slide. So you heard Kelsey talk with Willie Simmons, head coach FAMU, coming out of the break. Two offensive linemen and an already depleted offensive line. They bumped up some freshmen that weren't going to play. They traveled with 10, but now they've only got eight because Cesar Ray is 77. He's out for the game with injury. He started tonight, moved from left guard, and Brian Crawford, who started at left guard, he is also injured. So depth now up front as Charles Davis moved to right tackle, 62. It's going to be something now, Tim, the rest of the way to watch. That's why it's more imperative for the ball to come out quickly to Jeremy Musa. What a great start for Jeremy Musa and FAMU early in this game. A big, big week for them next week at Jackson State. And I think that was part of the other part Willie Simmons was concerned about is that game means a lot to Florida a &M. So third and four. Moose, a quick shot. Found a receiver open. That Xavier Smith. And this defense continues to give up chunk yardage. Cameron Kelly brings him down. Gain of 23, first down Rattlers. And it's just double slant. Read it inside out. Ball between the one and the nine. Really good throw. Allows Smith to run after the catch. Here comes the tempo. Here comes Musa again. Has to throw it out to the backfield. Terrell Jennings on the reception. Power Eccles brings him down after three. And I will say, Matt, you know, and I mentioned it at the top, their speed at receiver for Florida A&M is outstanding. This is a real legit challenge for the Tar Heel secondary, and so far it feels like Florida A&M's winning it. That is a good play. No, gets out of it. He, that was Moose on the carry. The defense, I got fooled by the ball fake. Cedric Gray brings him down. And Matt, you've said it a few times to keep reading the defensive end. Noah Taylor squeezes down. Musa keeps it. And he's made good decisions in the passing game, but also good decisions in the run game throughout the night. I mean, he just looks like he's playing street ball out there right now. He's dropping back, throwing to the pylon, gain of 11. Xavier Smith continues to have a nice night. And, that, and, that's a, and that's a good job of keeping his feet in bounds by Xavier Smith. That's the play they ran earlier, fake wide receiver screen. He hit the tight end, Kamari Young, the last time they ran it. Excellent job of getting through the progression. And Musa shooting it outside to the sideline. Seven receptions, 67 yards for Smith. And the Gene Chizik era here for North Carolina. His first game back as defensive coordinator under Mac Brown. Having to respond well to this chaos here in the second half. End around, speed. Kareem Burke, the freshman, brought down immediately by DeAndre Boykins after a short gain of three. And this is a really nice play by Boykins because their speed to the perimeter there. You talk about running the alley, DeAndre Boykins does an excellent job there of running the alley, getting to the ball carrier. So second and seven, first possession of the second half for FAMU. They give up the middle, keeps the legs moving. Noah Taylor, Cedric Gray combined on the tackle, gain of three to bring up third and medium, third and four. Yeah, and these third and manageables help protect that depleted offensive line because the ball can come out quickly. I mean, it can be catch and throw on a third and four. And so I would expect Willie Simmons to dial something up where Musa isn't stuck holding on to the football. But I also, after hearing Mac Brown talk going into half, would also expect this Carolina defense to challenge and come after him. 
Here comes the blitz off the left side. Musa gets it away, complete. Not gonna be enough for a first down. That was Smith and Boykins right there on the tackle. Good job by the North Carolina defense to provide pressure and Musa had to get rid of it. Yeah, and I think it, they did come after him. They had a bunch of pass rushers on the field and again, it's Boykin driving on either a shallow cross or you know, a, a ball carrier trying to get in the perimeter. Two big plays by DeAndre Boykin, which you know really end up preventing this rather offense from scoring and settling for a field goal attempt. Jose Romo Martinez on 35 yard attempt to give FAMU more points. Ball just off the right hash. Snap clean, hold clean, kick right down the middle. 35 yards is good. And the Rattlers still hanging around. 35-17, Willie Simmons said we can play with these guys and they continue in the third quarter. Stay tuned to get this. Tim, you know what I love about tonight? It's merely the appetizer for ACC football this season. It's week zero, so much more coming on ACC Network next week, Thursday night. Wake Forest hosting VMI. Friday night, Temple and Duke. Saturday's game, we start with a nooner. Rutgers and Boston College, Bethune, Cookman, and Miami. And ACC primetime football, Louisville and Syracuse, 8 p.m. Eastern. I think week zero, what is that? What's it, a moose boost? Is that like a an appetizer before an appetizer? You're, you're a fluffy guy. Hey, you would listen, know. I will take, I'll take any of it, man. You kidding me? Week zero football? You know what's the best part about week zero football is we had the 8-15 kicks. We had to hang out in the hotel room all day waiting for our week zero turn. I mean, I prepped for the game. I saw you running around campus, though. I mean, just. No, you I saw me running. That's all you did. You saw me running. Was it running? It was, it was, I think it was, it was a soft J on the jog. I, I think. was burning off last night's Asian fusion. That's going to be Omari and Hampton. We finally see a kick return. Hampton gets it outside across the 25, just inside the 30 as we go down to Kelsey. Well, guys, after that last touchdown, I watched Drake May as he came on the sidelines. All smiles, obviously, very happy about that way the drive ended. But then I waited to see what happened when he sat down next to their offensive coordinator and kind of took it in for a second. He looked at him, and he kind of looked at Drake, and he said, hey, I see you making plays, and I love it. Stay disciplined. So that was the message that he gave Drake May after that touchdown. Also, Drake made sure to give that touchdown ball to Omarion. That was his first one, so they're hanging on to that one. Kelsey, stay with us for a second. So we were reading the state discipline, meaning probably slide. Yeah, Matt, I think he just wants him to make good decisions. He says he's, he's making the plays. Let's let's maybe uh, not do that. What did we call it? A helicopter on the way no, in? No, we did. It was definitely a helicopter. He definitely did not get in. But if you look at Drake May so far throwing the ball, a little bit of success in every part of the field there, Tim. I love the fact that it's been spread around. We've mentioned that it's been spread around to a bunch of different players, and I love the fact that you're attacking all areas of the field because it makes you hard to defend. Caleb Hood at nine yards on first down. Looks as if he's going to have enough to get the first down. And Isaiah Major on the tackle. The other thing about that, Matt, is a lot of times a young quarterback becomes dependent on somebody that he feels like he needs to get the ball to. And so clearly Josh Downs is the most established player on this offense. So the fact that, you know, he doesn't feel like he's got to force it to him and can go where the coverage is dictating, that's a really positive sign for the Carolina offense. Abu Bangura, he's injured number 95. The defensive line got hit with some of the ineligibility issues. They'll check on Bangura. We'll step aside and be back. Started at the bottom, now we're here. 35-17, North Carolina, third quarter. Matt Barry, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs with you. ACC primetime football. Drake May, ball spotted just before the 39-yard line. May, delayed handoff. That's another talented true freshman, Petaway. He's been unable to get loose tonight, but I tell you what, they like both of these kids. Petaway, a four-star, ESPN's number eight running back. And you can tell he's got some wiggle and some shake to him. He kind of stumbled, you know, getting through that hole there, but in the open field is where they want him, and... He looks like an exciting player. We've seen Hood. We've seen Petaway. DJ got the start. Amari and Hampton scored a touchdown. So plenty of work out of the backfield. We've got a flag before the ball snapped. False start. 
Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty, second down. So we saw that Gaynor gets flagged. He got hit for a holding earlier in the game, but at least early on, penalties-wise, we saw the one out of a Hasek early. Motion penalties, that's just a lack of, of discipline. Me no, mental. Listen, pre-snap pre penalties yeah. drive you crazy, and, you know, relatively speaking, been a pretty clean performance out of both teams for a week zero matchup. Quick throw out of the backfield as Downs again continues to get the load of the targets. That's his 11th target on the night. There's Gainer. We featured mm -hmm. him, the transfer from Miami. Listen, go look for work, big fella. You know, no one there. Go look for some work. I like it. We were walking the field pregame and just kind of watching him warm up, and he kind of like gave me a football look, and I wanted to run to the press box. Early movement at a fan view. They're going to get that yardage back. Look like Justin Cooks, Gentle Hunt probably both moves. Offside, defense number 92. It's a five-yard penalty, third down. You know, with this defense, talking to their defensive coordinator, Brandon Sharp, we, we, we talked about the challenge that this game was going to present, and he told us, quote, he says, if you want a piece of cake, you may as well get a big one. <laughs> and he, he, he got some cake tonight. He sure did. But a good effort out of FAMU, short-handed May over the middle. Caught, knee was down. There was Gavin Blackwell with the reception. Kendall Bowler brought him down. Now, to be fair, Kelsey on the crew, she's the one with the southern accent. She could probably deliver the quote much more effectively than I. I thought you nailed that southern fake accent there. Um, yeah, he, he might have said it a little bit more like, if you want a piece of cake, you might as well get a big one. <laughs> it's right up my alley, you guys. Is I turn the accent off when I do TV. May pressured by Nadarius Fagan. The ball falls incomplete. There he is. There's the guy that Kelsey just made sound like Forrest Gump. There you go. He's excited about the pressure. And like he's worked off the he's worked off now he's the got cake. sweet tooth look at that now now he's got nice. sweet tooth like brush your teeth so Fagan a transfer from from Syracuse you know we had talked about a, the number of guys on this family roster ACC experience which is why Willie thought they can come in here and compete they've been in this stadium before they've played this team before probably the moment was probably not going to be too big for him and it hasn't been no not intimidated by the moment not uh, you know, no, no doubt in terms of, hey, can we compete? And, you know, Ryan Smith's group on the defensive side, yeah, Drake Mays had a bunch of success, but, you know, with a couple of secondary busts. But other than that, I, I feel like we've seen great effort by that defense. And that was DJ Jones on the carry and a gain of two. It's going to bring up fourth down for North Carolina. And to me, it seemed like Mac Brown probably told Phil Longo two down territory, which is why you had that run, you know, on third and roughly six. Going to give you a split screen here with Ryan Smith. Watch him coach up his defense as North Carolina now fourth and three converted earlier in the game. Ball spotted at FAMU's 40. May, quick throw out. Defender able to get to him, King. Knocks down DJ Jones. DJ kind of lost his feet, but a good start and a good stop for FAMU. Grab a piece of cake, Matt. I mean, look, let's go. I mean, gets a stop on defense and you know, ultimately, you know, not a super accurate throw by, by Drake May. The back can't keep his feet and, you know, big turnover on downs and this is a 35-17. I think FAMU's got to still feel like they've got some life left. 273 yards total offense for FAMU. They have moved the ball quite a bit. First down, 16 of them. So this certainly isn't a situation, Tim, where they can't get back in this game with a quick strike, especially with a player like Xavier Smith lined up. So Rattlers take over at the 40. That's a give to A.J. Davis, the pit transfer. He gets a nice gain on first down, and a gain of six. Raymond Bahasik brings him down. Well, you mentioned pit transfer, another player with ACC experience. And A.J. Davis, who's really listed as the third back on their depth chart, has had a pretty good night so far. Terrell Jennings, the starter. Jalen McLeod has been in there. Kind of the story for both teams. Multiple running backs playing for either.
Musa, 219 yards in his first start. Great play by the defensive line. DeAndre Boykins came in out of the secondary on a blitz in a loss of four. Yeah, and it's DeAndre Boykins again, and, and here he comes off, off the side right here, and, and ultimately, I think that Mac Brown decided, look, we're not going to sit around, be as passes, passive as we've been, playing with off coverage, not blitzing, been a change of philosophy this second half, and Boykins has gotten the message and made a bunch of plays. So let's see if this Carolina defense, who's brought in fresh legs, fresh personnel for an offensive lineman that's down on depth, third and eight. Musa, pressure coming. Avoids it. Good throw over the middle. And that was an absolute strike to Travante Davis. That's a big time throw, Tim Hasselbeck. It was a huge throw because he had to hold on to the football a little bit. They did do a good job of picking up the pressure. Good subtle movement in the pocket. And then on top of it, after the completion, you get roughing the passer as Musa is hit up high. They're going to flag that every time, whether yeah, you agree that, with it or not. They're yeah, I mean, flag that, it. that's a penalty in today's football. Rara Dilworth with, you know, hit to the head and neck area, forcible contact to Musa once that ball was released. And once again, Jeremy Musa making great decisions from inside the pocket. So here comes FAMU 35 17, approaching two minutes in the third, looking to add more points. They give up the middle to Davis. Nothing doing. Brought down by Fahasik and Gray. And, and I know Drake May is getting all the attention, but you can't tell me that Musa has not been as impressive as a quarterback tonight. He absolutely has been. And, you know, we've talked about the offensive line. He's played under pressure. He's made outstanding decisions. And for a player, you know, that has bounced around between, you know, Vanderbilt and Hawaii and junior college. He looks like a player that that is used to being in moments like this, which hasn't been the case. So FAMU kind of lost in their communication. Their play clock was winding down. Timeout, FAMU. It's the first time out of the half. So they'll take their first timeout. And Musi, or Musa rather, 6'3", 225, you'd mentioned he'd been around, finally getting an opportunity to call a place home, Kelsey. Yeah, and that's what he told me, Matt and Tim, when I talked to him. He said, look, when I get this opportunity to start on this stage, I'm not going to do anything I wouldn't normally do, no different than the game that I've played all my life. But he told me his goal has always just been to get on the field, to play, to be given a fair chance to do so. That He said that's what he's been searching for since his freshman year year he's definitely had command of this game and I saw him talking to his offensive linemen in the huddle before this drive just speaking to them individually saying hey we still have a chance taking them through what he saw on the field and then he walked away and said guys we still got this and again this is from a guy who beat out the starter from a year ago Rashawn McKay who played started 10 games had over close to 2,500 yards throwing I mean he was a good player but Moose has stepped up and he's done everything tonight Matt he's done an excellent job making decisions in the run game been an effective runner. He's played extremely well from inside the pocket. He had one mistake tonight, and it was the interception before half. But other than that, I've been I've come away really impressed with this performance. Spread the ball around. Nine different players have touched the ball. Moves into the end zone. And how about this? Travante Davis, touchdown rattler, 22 yards. We still have a ball game in Chapel Hill. And Musa once again, pressure in his face, throwing off his back foot as Power Eccles is right up, on, you know, ready to hit him. Just an excellent job of throwing the ball with anticipation and layering it enough to let the receiver go run underneath it. Man, that, what a play by Jeremy Musa. I'm telling you what, in a game where the, the highly touted Red shirt freshman gets all the attention, a flag on the play on the extra point. This audience watching a Florida a and m team that went nine and three last year. False start. 66 of the kicking team. Five drive penalty, replay the track. Seven and one in the SWAC. 
They made national headlines for the eligibility issues yesterday, and all Jeremy Moose has done is come in here to Keenan Stadium and kept his Rattlers in this 35-23, 24 barring the extra point, 262 yards and two touchdowns. And by the way, the passes have been on point. His accuracy has been remarkable. His anticipation is mar remarkable as well. Basically, you're having layered corner routes out here. And I just want you to see the pressure that he ends up, you know, having in his face. That ball is thrown so early, and with the receiver releasing inside, it's hard to gauge the angle. And so there's trust that needs to be kind of associated with that. And Trevante Davis, you know, hasn't broken to the corner yet. And ultimately what happens is you give ground, trust that the receiver's gonna be where he's supposed to be. And that's a perfectly thrown ball. And I also, Matt, you know, we talk about his path, Jeremy Musa's path. Yeah. It's not like he came in to Florida A&M and they said, all right, we're getting you ready to be the starter. Here are all the reps. He was competing for the job, which means he's not getting all the, the reps. And, you know, because of some missed time from Rashawn McKay, he gets an opportunity to get the majority of the work, and they decide to give him the nod, and he has been outstanding. He's got a little Marcus Mariota in it. The size, the ability, the look. Look, 6'3", 225, his arm is plenty live, and I, I'm impressed with just the poise and composure and accuracy. And what did Willie Simmons say about this opportunity for his team? He called it a get money game. You and I saw how many NFL scouts prior to the game, not saying this, this does anything in terms of as Hampton returns into the 25-yard line, but this is how you, you stand out in front of eyes you may not thought you were going to stand out in front of. Let me tell you something, man. I, I, I don't, I mean, listen, he's got a big game next week, you know. Deion Sanders has been telling everybody, come check out, uh, you know, my players at Jackson State and these other schools, they can play in the NFL. Come check these guys out. So the reality is, Matt, uh, he's going to, you continue to have a stage. And what you put on film, is your resume as a player. Guys will get a chance to do that next week. And it, it'd be impossible to watch this and not be really impressed by Jeremy Musa. It's been a celebration here on campus for HBCU football. North Carolina band out here, the marching 100. If you didn't see them at halftime, they were absolutely phenomenal. Here's Omari and Hampton. Tell you what, they're hitting on defense as well. But you'd mention that game next week, Jackson State, Florida, A&M, ESPN2, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's another national spotlight for HBCUs, and you can't underestimate what Dion's done for schools like Florida A&M, and that's good football. Well, Florida A&M, certainly Jackson done it State. at Jackson State, and I think just in general, the attention on the game, no question about it. And Listen, if we see an effort like we're seeing now, we're gonna be, you're going to be watching good football. That's Hampton again, missed tackle by Nadarius Fagan, gain of 11. Clock winding down here in the third quarter. So Hampton out. The true freshman's had a nice debut. Caleb Hood back in. Hampton leads the Tar Heels with 64 yards and a touchdown, 11 carries. Also has a line share of the carries as well. This likely the last play of the third quarter. May's going to take a shot downfield. No flag incidental contact is what they'll call it intended for Gavin Blackwell. Covered by Winsome Frazier. You know, I thought there was a chance they were just going to take it to the quarter. Instead, they wanted to take a shot. And you definitely got a bit of a grab. <laughs> You know, by Frazier. Quarter here on ACC Network, 35-24. Florida A&M staying in this. Drake May making his debut at starting quarterback for the Tar Heels. Second and 10. May over the middle, incomplete, intended for Nesbitt. Good coverage by Kamani King. Now you got a third and 10 with a lot of life, you know, and, and kind of spirit still for Florida A&M and kind of a unique situation here 
for North Carolina. You know, turnover on downs previous series, and now a third and long. Really critical to, for them to convert. And May does just that. Good patience. Finds Nesbitt, gain of 15. And clearly, you know, it's just a, a high low on the corner corner route with a wide route from the back. It's interesting, critical moment. Who did they go to? A tight end. And Bryson Nesbitt. Leads the Tar Heels with 53 yards, had the touchdown earlier. That's Petaway trying to get to the outside. There's the speed from Petaway. Another one of the highly touted young running backs, Kendall Bowler brings him down, gain of 12. And I'll tell you, the speed to the perimeter by Petwedge, it's exciting. He was kind of used, you know, kind of has the build and speed of a third down back, but out of the backfield there on a first down, that was impressive. 5'10", 195, Suffolk, Virginia. Omari and Hampton, the other true freshman. May has to get out of the pocket. And again, at least at least that one, he looked like he was attempting to go down. I'm Fagan okay and with Stevens that. made him pay, gain a six. I'm okay with that one, Matt. Climb in the pocket. There you go. Get some positive yards. And it's, it's an 11 point game right now. And so, you know, this isn't necessarily time to, to say, hey, I'm saving this for something else. Look at that cut by Petaway. The true freshman. Touchdown, Carolina. 29 yards of quicks. And we've seen Hampton get in. We've seen Petaway make three guys miss. And the Tar Heels have extended their lead. Look at him put his foot in the ground and uh, <laughs> it's just the absolute <laughs> stick and you could see it on earlier runs where you thought, man, he has this quickness in the open field and it's about to go. Just needed a couple of more opportunities to get into the open field. And Phil Longo's like, hey, yeah, keep doing that. I love that you said that because you can tell watching certain players that even though the play maybe garners two to three yards, you can see what's there. Mm. And there we saw a perfect collision of what's there and what he's capable of doing. Tim, take us away. George Petaway, these true freshman running backs are something else. They certainly are. Had to wait his turn to get into the backfield, but once he got into the open field, it was all Petaway into the end zone. to tell you that the part of his offense you need to do is distribute the football to that end six different North Carolina players have scored a touchdown tonight they've been distributing the ball well nine possessions six touchdowns for Drake May and his debut is the quarterback for Phil Longo's offense and North Carolina Tar Heels as they've extended their lead 42 to 24. So Kim's going to kick that one into the end zone. So much more ACC football coming your way next here on ACC Network Thursday night. Wake Forest, VMI, 7.30 Eastern Friday night. Temple and Duke. Elko's debut as the head coach at Duke. Rutgers and Boston College coming up Saturday noon Eastern. Bethune-Cookman. And we see Mario Cristobal's debut as Miami's head coach in the ACC primetime football. Louisville and Syracuse, a conference game in a big year for Dino Babers and Louisville. Kind of a trendy pick to click in the ACC. Satterfield's got Malik Cunningham back. They got some portal guys. That's, okay. the, that's the issue to me. Cunningham is hard to defend. He, he's a better passer than I think people realize. Tremendous runner and then the portal effect. So many transfers. What does it do to that defense? That's McLeod up the middle. First few weeks, I think all of us that, that do games or even when I'm in studio, the portal effect that we're going to see week in and week out across the country is going to be incredible. Because, I mean, we're seeing it tonight. Jeremy Musa, Vanderbilt quarterback, now here at Florida a and I mean, The portal is going to change college football. It already has, but it's an immediate impact with players that you can put on the field. I mean, look at Halinski today. 
Northwestern, he transferred in from South Carolina. Won the job, balls out, North Carolina. Can they force the turnover? And UNC has it, second of the night for them. That was DeAndre Boykin with the fumble recovery. Storm Duck had an interception earlier, and that's exactly what Gene, Gene Chizik needed to dial up for this defense. And you know something, that, as you're looking at this defense and you're looking for somebody to step up and, and make a play, be a difference maker, it's a good job of, of kind of getting your shoulder on the football by Power Eccles. We've talked about him throughout the night. And then it's DeAndre Boykins. Those two guys have popped up and they've shown. And so I think that you know, as you're looking for people to make an impact on defense, there are two, there are two that have flashed tonight. So ball at the 27. May look at a, get a quick shot. He does. Josh Downs. Touchdown. Make it five touchdowns for Drake May. And a quick strike after the turnover. You saw Downs come up limping a little bit. That's exactly what you want to see out of your offense. Defense make the play. Offense pick you up. Now, extra point shy of 49-24. And Matt, if you think about it, that, that's basically what's happened. Scoring off of the turnover, so critical, have complimentary football before the half, and then you get the fumble recovery, one play shot down the field to Josh Downs for the score. <laughs> 260 yards and another touchdown for Drake May. You know, Drake May. Going to start counting them on, on two hands, but just one hand now as he hits Josh Downs because good job of protecting him. He's able to protect him, secure the catch. North Carolina rolling. Stay tuned to get this five feet. The leader of the offensive line due to his young quarterback gives him a hug and says, kid, hell of a game. 287 yards and five touchdowns. No matter how good somebody is in practice, it's different when you see him do it in the game as a teammate. The respect that you can kind of gain from that, and I, I don't think there's any doubt that Corey Gaynor has been a leader, you know, for this team, and I think there should be a lot of excitement about how Drake May has played tonight. He's the first North Carolina quarterback to throw five touchdowns in his first start. Also the first North Carolina quarterback to throw five touchdowns in a season opener. So here's Josh Downs. He's going to run to the post. Now you have to be wary of this backside safety that, that is going to run in and try to fall in to make the play. And so you need to do a good job of not leading him too far across the field. That's a really good job by Drake May of not leading him across mid into the middle of the field. And then an excellent job of Josh Downs you know, securing the catch, and then just look at these numbers. So, look, I don't want to go broadcast hyperbole here. We're not building a statue for this kid. You're talking about a hot take, Barry? No, no, no. You, you, about? You, actually, earlier you gave two hot takes I was going to bring up, but it had yeah. moved on. I was going to ask if you were, like, auditioning for Get Up or something. <laughs> but you know the game. You played the position. What have you seen out of him tonight with ball placement, specifically something like that on downs? Yeah, I've been really impressed with the accuracy. I thought, and in fairness, it was raining pretty hard early in the game. He was a little nervous at the very beginning. And that run, I think, settled him into the game. And then from that point, I think he has seen things perfectly. I think he's placed the ball, you know, perfectly. And he hasn't faced a ton of adversity. But I think ultimately, in terms of what you've seen from the physical ability, I've been really impressed. Kind of miscommunication there for the first time tonight with Musa. His pass falls incomplete. Talk to people around here in Chapel Hill of how close it was between Drake May and Jacoby Criswell as you see uh, Downs there. He got banged up on that touchdown. And, and let me say this. I'm going to jump you on this. What do you He's got? been awesome. Get him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, done. Like go, you're going to Boone next week. Uh, but the, the competition, according to everyone here, and Chapel Hill came down to the end. 
and you, you'd set it perfectly now. Third down for FAMU. Pass complete, that's gonna be a first down. He's lucky he came up with that tackle on Xavier Smith because if Balfour doesn't do it, Smith has space. But when you've got a young team led by a young quarterback, you just don't know what's gonna happen when you put them under the lights, national TV, mm -hmm. in a game situation. No, you don't, and he's responded well to it. And I've said that there, there hasn't been a, you know, much adversity. Let's remember, Sam Howe at one point was pulled out of the game. You know, because he was struggling. I think maybe it was a Wake Forest game. He, he was struggling. And so I, I think that, you know, we're saying, hey, let's protect Drake May and get him out of the game. But let's also get you Holding. Criswell in there. Offense number 61. 10-yard penalty. First down. Jalen Goss. Transfer from Florida State. We mentioned a lot of the transfer portal players, especially at FAMU there in Tallahassee, right across the street, practically. But there's Gaynor talking to his young quarterback. I, I really do love the story of Corey, Corey, Corey Gaynor. We, we had touched on it earlier in the broadcast. Coming in from Miami, came in, and the coach has said it perfectly. He didn't come in guns blazing, yelling, mm -hmm. and screaming with no purpose. Settled in, worked, and let the work do the talking for him. Yeah, and it was clear that he's viewed as a leader by the offensive guys and the defensive guys. And to do that in such a short period of time is impressive. Snap infraction, offense number 69. Five yard penalty, first down. You know, that offensive line, one of the big issues a year ago, they bring in Jack McNell Jr., who Phil Longo said has been a game changer for this offensive line and his old school approach to just get these guys to get back to playing football up front, which is a problem for them last year. And Jack Bicknell Jr., they crossed paths at, at Ole Miss, and he's got a lot of experience coaching the guys up front, and it looks like it's paying immediate dividends. Oh, what a play. They're going to rule it incomplete, but Musa extended that, threw it across his body, somehow found a crease between the defenders. It's all for naught, Jeremiah Pruitt. They just ran out of space, and good job of Musa escaping outside the pocket. And so you know, the North Carolina you know, front, now granted, we, we've mentioned the depleted offensive line, but it does seem like the pass rush has started to come alive a little bit, and I think that that has helped the secondary here in the second half. 331 total yards for Florida A&M. North Carolina posting 478. Does that ball pop out? It looks as if they are gonna rule Musa up, ball out. Travis Shaw, five-star nose tackle out of Greensboro, North Carolina is gonna come up with it and another turnover for the Chiswick defense. on the field is that the runner was down before the ball became loose. It'll be third down. You didn't hear a whistle. It looked as if his knee hit. Yeah, right there. He's arm, got yeah. possession of the ball. The elbow's down and look, it's gonna still be FAMU's ball, but you know, I just said it, it seems like these pass rushers now you know, have come alive. And you know, part of it is just wearing down the front. Florida AM, but the other thing is get these known passing situations. I do think this is the strength of this defense is they have talent on this defensive line. You get a package here with good pass rushers. Come on, Rucker being one of them down at the bottom of the screen. Chiswick thinks he's got eight guys up front that he can call anything with. It's going to be a fourth down and out for FAMU. What, you know, one player that keeps coming up, Javari Ritzy, he's second, he's on their second team. He rotates in a lot, but he doesn't start out there. They think he's one of their best players. And that's why I think. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 64. The penalty is declined. Be fourth down. I, I think it's the strength of their football team, Matt, to go back to their front. And when you think about Vohasek's played a ton of snaps. Miles Murphy, I mean, Every, I mean, he's had so much potential, and I, I think they think he can be a really good player. Ritzy is right behind him, and you know, I think if you keep things simple and you can get a good pass rush, I think that'll help the secondary play better. I'm gonna let Cameron Kelly go at a punt here. Fields it at the 29-yard line, has some space, finds a crease, takes it into FAMU territory. 
at the 44-yard line. We'll see if they bring Drake May back out. It is all Tar Heels, 49-24. Football is the game of life. Literally nothing that makes me more happy, Matt, than these shoes in my hand and football with this microphone standing on this field. You all know about the Jordan shoes, of course. I've got one of the exclusive pairs here that the team issues. Also, though, how about these LeBron shoes? LeBron actually partnered with FAMU last year in 2021, as you see North Carolina trying to make a run for it right now. Last year in 2021, made them the first HBCU guys to partner and get to wear these shoes, the exclusives, the logo as well on all of their jerseys. Started with the basketball team making their way through. You know, I've been a I've been an MJ girl for a long time, but these are pretty cool. They've got the the logo right here. The Rattler on the top of this one on the left one, guys. So really cool thing. And, and just another effort by LeBron James to continue to try and highlight HBCUs. Uh, my intention, other than trying to get these shoes and feeling like I'm walking around with gold in my hands because I should have a security guard with these, um, is that I just really solely wanted you guys to debate LeBron and MJ up there. So good luck. Like debate what? You know, Basketball? Like the security. player? Yeah, yeah. Look, who's the greatest? Uh, I'm not even going to get in that argument here. That, that, you know, you know what? That is, that is, this isn't first take. I teed you guys up for but it. But that's Max office with another Jordan wall, and it's Michael Jordan, 366 mm. days a year that don't exist. I, listen, we're not going to argue. It's, hey, it's we're not going to argue about that. But how about Max Wall, by the way? That like, wall, can we like, get, like his Max shoe games. Is pretty good. Decorated for his birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Max. 71 years old. You think he got a pair, pair of Jordans for his birthday? I mean, yeah, we, he, yeah, we, he did. we tried so hard. We really did. We did. Like we, we gave it an effort. wasn't good enough. Jeremy, you owe us. Thought it was weird that you were gonna try to tackle Bubba Cunningham walking off the field to try to to get his Jordans. There goes Hampton. Omarion's like, you want to get some pet away? Come get me. 25-yard touchdown. These true freshman running backs. He goes over 100 yards on the night. 101 yards, two touchdowns, 14 carries. I'm not going to spit a hot take machine, Tim Hasselbeck, but these two true freshmen, they are going to be a problem for people. Yeah, and they found backs. You know, they had two good backs a couple years ago. Ty Chandler was an effective back for them a year ago. And Javante, Michael Carter. And now you look at these two guys. It's a really good start. And, you know, now you have a backfield now. You've created competition. And that competition is, is maybe bringing out the best in these players. And we're seeing it from the freshmen for sure. So you look at Hampton, 14 carries, 101 yards and two touchdowns. Petaway, four carries, 51 yards and a touchdown. Those are the true freshmen. And then Drake Mays in there. But here's Hampton again. He was a North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. Uh, listen, I mean, he, he got us going on Natron Means early on. And you know, he runs with so much power. And then Petaway's speed. We saw him in the two-minute drive, but you also saw a couple runs that were close to breaking, and then it was just a matter of time once he got into the open field that he was going to punch it in. And You know, I think the duo being able to go between the power and the elusiveness is going to be something that's going to be hard for defenses to deal with. So Hampton, four-star kid, ESPN's fifth, number 15 running back. Petaway was actually ranked higher as the number eight running back in the country and I brought up during the break with these young running backs talking about the different skill set reminds me of back in the day James Davis and CJ Spiller mm. at Clemson yeah. when they were doing their thunder lightning Davis more off tackle Spiller was the guy that when he caught the ball out of the backfield or touched it he was a home run waiting to happen uh, I've been impressed and, and the big thing with running backs when you play them as freshmen is you don't want to be handcuffed as a play caller you want to feel like hey can I leave him in there on third down? Does he know what he's doing in pass protection? And I think that would be the only thing that would limit these young freshmen from ever leaving the field. I would say for any of them, I think the one thing any coach worries about with the young back is pass pro. Yeah. That's it. I, skill's there. Skill's there. I think DJ Jones started the game because, you know, 
Listen, British Brooks probably would have been the starter, you know, if not for his injury. And so ultimately, you know, there's this trust that you're going to protect the football, that you're going to, you know, know your assignment and pass protection, that you're going to, you know, hit the hole the way that you've been coached to do that. And you know, I, I, I've seen enough out of these guys as runners to make sure you're spending extra time on the blitz pickup assignments. And mind you, all of this is without the starter, British Brooks. British had earned the starting role. He's now a student coach, kind of helping the, the running backs and Mac Brown. But imagine now if you got, then you're going five deep in this running back, but it's just the most cliche thing you'll hear in football, next man up. And these guys have taken advantage of it. We've got a new quarterback now, Rashawn McKay. He's in for FAMU. We also saw Jacoby Criswell warming up on the North Carolina sidelines. So point of the game now, both backup quarterbacks are going to get in. We'll probably see some of the backup players for North Carolina defensively. As they get set now, they'll move to 1-0 on the season. And they head to Boone, North Carolina next week to take on Appalachian State. DeAndre Francis now. Redshirt freshman, 5'7", 173. FAMU's got a huge game next week against Jackson State, and that was kind of one of the concerns when the story came out yesterday. But all told, they came, they competed, and they played. They ought to be proud of themselves. They, there's no doubt they came and competed. And there's an element. There's always an excitement. If you, know, you get an opportunity to play in an environment like this against an opponent like you know North Carolina, that that is oftentimes the biggest game of your season to, to be able to play, you know, on this stage and, you know, against some players that, you know, look, coming out of high school, people probably recruited as better players than than you were. That being said, it feels like next week's game just as big, if not bigger, for this Florida A&M group. All right, so third and five, that's going to fall incomplete intended for Jalen Howard. I do love what North Carolina did this week on campus, the celebration of the HBCUs. The Florida A&M band is so good. It was so fun to watch and just elevated. We talked to Willie about that during our call this week. He wants people to understand that HBCUs bring talent. They bring good football. They came into this game saying they could compete with North Carolina, and really for three and a quarter quarters, mm -hmm. they did. It's just about getting the attention. Dion went and got the number one ranked player in the country to go to Jackson State. And I think it's it's that point. And there's a couple of good players that, that weren't available tonight. And so, yeah, there's no doubt about it. Talent on both sides of the field. 645 left in the fourth quarter. We're back after this. Our own quarterback, Mark May, 1986, ACC leading passer. And tonight, his son, followed in his footsteps, made his debut as North Carolina's starting quarterback. Hey, Drake, your room's dirty, go clean it. Hey, Dad, let's compare numbers from debuts. You go clean my room because I had more touchdown. We're going to give you the numbers here in a minute as Jacoby Criswell's in at quarterback now. As we see Elijah Green, that is the fifth running back we've seen tonight. And Elijah Green gets up the sidelines for a big game. So as I was saying, Dad, you go make my bed. Now, having Whoa. said that, Tim Hasselback, dad got son in yards, but son got dad in touchdown passes. Who do you declare the winner? The winner is the dad. I don't care that they lost. He had to throw with Jeff Saturday's shoulder pads on. You see the size of those things? I don't know how you had you have that many attempts, A, back then, and B, with those shoulder pads. Nah, I'm going Drake. What? Five times. More completions, too. Completions with a tiebreaker. Drake, you win. Dad buys dinner. There's Elijah Green again. Let's talk Jacoby Criswell now. He's been in this program. A lot of experience in terms of guys that have played here enough to where you thought he would walk in and win the job or at least compete for it. He got beat out, but he's taken it well. Yeah, I think probably as well as you can take it. You know, there's disappointment. You know, Phil Longo, you know, had recruited him for a while, knows him. I think they've got a very good relationship. He's got a good understanding of 
this offensive system, and there's no doubt that they feel comfortable with him in the game as the quarterback. Obviously, they were excited about Drake May, his decision making, and why he got the nod. He started a game last year against Wofford, his first career start, played in four last year, and then in 2020 played in six games. So in terms of gameplay experience, he, he had the start over Drake, but at the end of the day, Criswell was beat out. And, and look, I, it'll be a part of conversations throughout the week at every booth and every game across the country. When decisions are made like this, the first thing, what's the first thing you think of when you name your starting quarterback and the guy you beat out? You think about the guy leaving and right. obviously the windows and times to do that. And, you know, certainly not implying that, you know, Criswell was thinking about that. But, you know, one of the things Phil Longo did say about it and, and you know, make it be known truthfully, both Mac oh, and game. Phil Longo spoke highly of Jacoby Criswell. They like him as a player. In fact, Phil Longo said he's got real arm talent. Like he said, you know, go ask anybody that's been around it. Go ask Sam, you know, what kind of arm Jacoby Criswell has. And so I, I think that, you know, look, one guy plays, it's a unique position. That's difficult. You never know when your opportunity is going to come back around. And that's why you try to take advantage of opportunities like this to play, at an, play during the end of a game. Let's talk about one play away now as Criswell, he can do this, tucks the ball and runs. Good effort there, gets to the sideline and a good gain out of Criswell. You know, you're, you're always one play away, and we've seen a couple of times tonight, Drake May take a couple of shots, went airborne one time. He appears to be one of those kids that, that you want to see, you want to give it your all. But you, you never know when the next guy is going to be needed. We saw, it, we saw it out of the running back room when British Brooks went down. You don't know, and that's why it's not easy to be in these situations, to, to kind of keep your optimism, to be a supportive teammate. Not just say this for any quarterbacks that are still watching the game. It's important for a quarterback room to have support from the guy that's the backup. And the truth is, if you're supportive as the backup, when you and if and when you get your opportunity, it comes back around. and. There's a right way to handle it. It seems like they're doing it the right way. Again, we've seen five running backs tonight. Elijah Green getting his number called. He's flashed here in a couple of opportunities he's gotten. Be sure to stick around, by the way, after the game for the ACC huddle. They'll have a full recap of tonight's game highlights, analysis, interviews. And that's good before we wrap things up here. Tim, they actually called Aaron Katzman. By the way, congratulations, Aaron Katzman, 40 under 40. Uh, of people in, in sports. That's, that's right. I mean, he's a star waiting to happen in the executive world. Cornette and Matt Klain actually want Hasselbeck to stick around for a booth hit just to kind of see what he saw up here. So you think that, I thought they wanted you to sh come go no. down there with some hot takes. No, they, no, that, they I want to see you and Matt Klain you know, battling it out. Is this, the, takes. Is this the portion of the program where we get into to ESPN history? I actually auditioned Eric McClain for his job at the network. And I also auditioned E.J. E. Manuel. And who, guess, who, and by wait, the way, wait, who, wait, guess who what? had the better audition? Guess I want to know right now. Well, they, both, the, well, they both got hired, so I, you know I, that I, the host I, was good. I didn't ask you if they got hired. I know they got hired. Who had the better audition? Okay, so they're so nervous right <laughs> they, now if they can hear us. Because they know I'm about to decide. Now, to be fair, I did studio and game with Matt Klain. So he was kind of a, a two-tool guy coming in game and studio. The, the company had their eye on you know Matt Klain for a long time. Elijah Green <laughs> saves me here because he scored the touchdown. And I don't have to decide between E.J. Manuel and Eric McClain. I'll just say they're all really good at their job, as is Jordan Cornett, that those three coming up after the game, and that yet another North Carolina running back has scored a touchdown. 62-24. And each team will move on to their week one opponent. Florida and m Jackson State, North Carolina, Back-to-back -back road trips. Boone, North Carolina, they're going to go don't mess around with Appalachian State. Who knows going to be geared up for that one. Then they've got Georgia State. And if you're wondering why North Carolina is traveling to App State and Georgia State, I'm sure they probably are too. <laughs> It'll be the bye week.
run on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. There, that, that's what you need. Did and you buzz for that, Matt? They'll get the, yeah, that's exactly what I need. They'll get the bye week and then go to Notre Dame. Since you won't be gracing the huddle with your presence, give, I'll take another look at it here real quick while we've got you. Elijah Green. Oh, he's down. Short. Down. I'm gonna pull that off the board. And so now as we're waiting for them to respot this and put the clock, who had the better audition? Let me read the next promo they put up on the screen here. You guys got anything you want to run out of the truck? What do you have? Is there a field hockey promo you're getting to, Matt? <laughs> let's, what do you got? let's promote some ACC Network games next week. All right, let's take a look now at the uh, North Carolina schedule here. So, look, all right, North Carolina's has eight straight on the road. They, they, they just haven't been a good road team. So Appalachian State, to me, when you look at this schedule, you're going to you're going to know anything and everything you want about North Carolina after next week because that environment for this young team mm -hmm. is going to be as loud and hostile as any environment on this schedule, if not the most. And it's one of the reasons Mac felt like they needed to play this game. When this game was unsure about this game, they needed to play this game to see what they had to kind of figure it out before you go play App State. And App State... And Boone is going to be a challenge. Like, yeah. They have good players. That is a good defense. They, that, that is a tough football team. And so that is a huge challenge. Georgia State, you know, obviously, you know, not, not necessarily. At the first review, the runner was down at the one yard line. It'll be second and goal. The game clock will start on my signal. So that, I believe, that was our first official review tonight. We had the Drake May run earlier. It wasn't an official review, Two. so you know we got out of here a uh, three quarters and 13 and a half minutes without a review. We didn't have a targeting penalty with the 136 left. It's been for a week zero. I'd say Tim pretty clean. I, I would agree. Three penalties for North Carolina, nine of them for FAMU. Here's second and goal. It's Criswell and Green in the backfield again. And now we have a flag. Did I jinx it? You did. I did. I jinxed the cleanliness of this game. You know, Matt, to, to just kind of finish up on that schedule, I think we're going to get a hold here, by the way. Holding. Offense, number 80. 10-yard penalty, second down. Look, uh, they're hard games, super winnable games prior to that Notre Dame game. By week before that Notre Dame game, think of the magnitude of that game. If they go program. in three and zero, yeah, because they, well, it's a big game but with where Notre Dame is now. That look, Notre Dame's got Ohio State week one. I that, get it, I get it, and someone's gonna lose that game. But like, assuming that game is a competitive game, that uh, we talked about it before about the Florida State LSU game being a big game. Like, how these ACC schools do against non-conference opponents? that people nationally respect matter. Boy, did I really do us in, didn't I? Delay of game, offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Because the game clock was running under one minute, penalty has 10 second runoff options. You think when Mac goes back to Boone next week, they remember that, Mac Brown? I think he's wearing those shorts. Probably a shirt Please with a collar the game like that. 35 seconds. What a legend. Look at that hair. That is prolific. Listen, if you're complimenting the hair, I mean, it must be really That's good. That's actually true. <laughs> you know, it's like chefs can compliment food. <laughs> hair can compliment hair. Which, by the way, speaking of hair, if you're looking for that, don't watch the ACC huddle. There is not one follic honestly on the trio. You people with hair think you're so cool. And Kelsey Riggs will be 
interviewing Mac Brown here in a moment in that post-game show. But there you have it, 56-24, the final for Mac Brown in North Carolina. To get out of here with the win, there were some sloppy, there were some really good, there's some coachable moments. And Willie Simmons and Florida A&M, they came in a difficult situation, and they played their butts off. Way to show out for the Rattlers. Tim, your final thoughts. Listen, it was great effort by FAMU. I was impressed by the way they fought. Also really impressed with that guy there, Drake May. Outstanding start to get the Drake May era here at North Carolina. And I think there's a lot to build on, a lot to correct.